ABC 7 is the official home of the U10 Miners, and I'm happy to be joined once again by the head coach of the men's basketball team, uh, Coach Joe Golding. Coach Golding, thanks again for stopping by. Thanks for having me. 7-3 uh, and three record right now, coming off your first conference win against La Tech over the weekend. A recap of that game against the Bulldogs. Yeah, the most important things were 1-0, and oh, right, yeah. in conference, man. You know, um, we're happy to be 7-3, and three, but we talked a lot to our team that we were going to be 1-0 and oh or 0-1 oh and one, uh, at the end of that night. And um, I thought our, our guys got back to us and who we are defensively. We had a great week of practice, and, you know, we held a really good offensive team at La Tech to 29%. They only had four threes for the game, and we turned them over 20 times. So uh, defensively, we got back to us. I thought we played really, really well. Uh, offensively, we played much better in the second half than we did the first half, had much better ball movement. Uh, we got to the free throw line 37 times, which is a positive. That's all we'll talk about on free throws right now. But at the end of the day, yeah. man, we're 1-0. Uh, it was a good win. And uh, obviously, uh, you know, you, you, you want to start off conference play. I didn't know this. First time we've been 1-0 in seven years. Mm -hmm. So obviously, a uh, great start to, uh, to conference play. If you don't mind, though, I'd like to go back to the free throws. I have to go back to yeah. I have to go back to the free throws. Uh, how is it that something that you work on, like in practice, you know, improving those free throws? Yeah, you've been around practice. Yeah. You've seen it, man. We work on it. Uh, it it's a, there's a fine line too, man. Right? Yeah. Like you don't want to work on it uh, and get in their head mentally, right? And, and uh, talk about it a lot. You just put in the work. Um, you tell tell your guys. Uh, our guys work on it after practice, during practice, uh, before practice, and so our guys are getting to the free throw line. We actually shoot them really well in practice. Yeah. Uh, we just got to carry over to the game and shoot better free throws at the game. And now moving forward on Wednesday, you have uh, the Don Haskins Sun Bowl Invitational coming up. A, a great field here in, in New Mexico State, Kent State. You're going to open up against North Carolina A&T. Just looking ahead at your matchup, what do you see from North yeah, Carolina? Yeah, they didn't do us any favors, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. obviously I have nothing to do with the schedule. Yeah. I would have brought any of these yeah. three teams here. But um, North Carolina A&T is uh, coming off a... Of, uh, a tournament out of Vegas where they just played um, where they beat Texas Southern and then lost to a really good Norfolk uh, team uh, which is one of the better mid-majors in the country uh, was a one possession game in the last they actually tied it up in the, in the, in the last minute of the game um, and Norfolk won uh, hit two free throws uh, down the stretch to win the game so got a really good team they're led by three guards um, that, that uh, can really play that they're extremely talented guards um, and then uh, their bigs um, do a good job of, of playing their role um, so we're going to have our work cut out for us. On the other side of that bracket, Kent State's going to take on New Mexico State. Po possibly see the Aggies again if they, they take care of business and you take care of business in the championship. What do you see, though, from Kent State and New Mexico State when you look at those two teams? Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I haven't watched Kent State at all. Right. I do know this. They're one of the top mid-majors yeah. uh, in the country. I think in the last mid-major poll, they were ranked number two or three. Um, they, they have a terrific team. Obviously, they bring a lot of guys back from last year, which I think they won 23 or 24 mm -hmm. games and bring – uh, bring, bring a lot back. I don't know how many, but they bring a bunch. And obviously, New Mexico State, we know they're a really good team. We've split with them this year in two games. We beat them at our place. They beat us uh, at, at their place. And so we also know that they're very talented as well. Going back to the Sun Bowl Invitational, last year you made it to the championship. Uh, you fell to Bradley in the championship. Is that something that you do want to accomplish at your time here is to win that tournament? Yeah, absolutely. The history I, you know, with I was it? told, uh, you know, yeah. I think the last time we won was 2019, but right. we've only won once uh, in the last six years. Um, you know, there's good teams in this tournament, but actually, you know, uh, uh, sure, surely, you know, you want to uh, uh, win, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tournament put on here in, in, in our great city and, and um, you know, you, you want to win. If, if you're playing for a trophy, you want to host that trophy. And so uh, last year it was tough, you know, to watch Bradley on your home court uh, raise, the, raise the trophy. So uh, we got a brand new team. They don't really understand that. We're trying to walk them through it um, to get them to understand what the Sun Bowl tournament is, what it's about, the history of it. And that is, again, the Sun Bowl Don Haskins Invitational that begins on Wednesday. UTEP will take on North Carolina A&T, 7.30 p.m. tip-off. Before that, Kent State and NMSU will face each other at 5.30 p.m. But a fun tournament coming down the line here beginning on Wednesday. My thanks to head coach Joe Golding for stopping by. Best of luck during the, the tournament, coach. Thanks. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Back to you. All right, we're talking about the first alert that we issued yesterday, not for tonight or tomorrow, but late in the day Thursday and then Friday. In the meantime, temperature's not bad. 60s out to the west of us. We're 58, 44 in Albuquerque. We have 40s bottled up towards the east up in the Texas Panhandle and a good portion of the state of Texas. But again, here is a look at our temperatures, and we jumped ahead all the way through uh, Thursday, 10 o'clock, because that's when the cold air is going to start to make its way in here behind that Arctic front that will drive through. And we're going to take a look at the wind chills we expect. That will be coming up at ABC 7 at 5. But you can see the colder temperatures will move in here. But when we talk about the wind chills and the winds picking up, that's what we're going to have to deal with. That's going to be the brutal aspect of heading into your Friday morning. But again, that will come up at ABC 7 at 5. In the meantime, those temperatures will be taking a dip in the winds.
going to be picking up. We're talking about 25 on Thursday.